the Secanolia Security Show in proud partnership with Centenary Bank and MTN. Hey, it's the Secanolia Security Show, back for another edition. And today's show starts off with a quick question. How many of us do you think have a digital device like this? Any people? Any hands? Okay, let me give you the bueno. Close to over 15 million Ugandans have a mobile device. You know what that means? It means that we need cyber security. But what does that mean? Hmm. You know, cyber security is the practice of defending our mobile devices, computers, networks, anything digital against malicious attacks. And we have got specialists who are gonna be there unleashing their data. At the same time, we've got a chance for you to win some big bucks courtesy of Centenary Bank. So how safe is your money at Centenary Bank? Well, we've got good news for you. We caught up with the big man himself, the managing director of Centenary Bank, one of our chief sponsors, who actually told us that everything is in check. At Centenary Bank, like all banks, what we sell is trust. And uh, for people to come and work with us, for our customers to be comfortable working with us, we have to be secure. Security becomes very paramount and critical for all the transactions they do with us on all the platforms where they operate. First and foremost, most of course, we have the banking halls over the counter. Over the counter, now it is a requirement when people come to identify themselves to cut out transactions, they use biometrics. That ensures that whoever has come to transact is indeed the actual owner of that account. So that is a thing that is going on in all our banking halls. And of course, they identify themselves by IDs, uh, national identification cards, and so on, uh, on top of signing documents. But of course, with the biometrics now, we've minimized all the other inconveniences of identification. We've digitized it, which is technology now. When it comes to the usage of uh, our online banking platform, they use what they call OTP, one-time passwords, which always have to come and uh, they receive them on their, you know, sets and sets, telephones, for them to be able to put in those numbers. And of course, they have to use the secure websites, HTTPS. Usually, we encourage our clients to look out for our platform, our website that begins with HTTPS, it always ends with S, S standing for secure. And uh, they, have, have, they also have the liberty to change those pins every time they feel insecure. If uh, they feel somebody could have come in contact with their numbers. When to, it comes to the usage of cards, we have the, the biggest ATM network in this country. And of course, we've issued the, almost a million uh, center visa cards uh, to our customers. And these cards are pin and chip. Uh, you have to use a, a personal identification number and information is encrypted in a chip on that card, ensuring that it is as secure as it can ever be. Of course, the most important thing that we want, always want to remind our customers to do is to ensure that they safeguard you know, those cards. We have uh, the biggest agent network in this country, almost 4,000 agents, which agents are, by the way, authorized by Bank of Uganda, and also their systems are connected to our systems online. So you can't cut out any transaction when there is a breakdown in the connectivity between the agent and our systems. And even when you are going to transact with them, you initiate a transaction on your phones, uh, thereby ensuring that uh, it is indeed you the owner of the account that is transacting on that account with the agent. And even after you've transacted again, you receive a message through an SMS uh, to, to, to confirm that indeed your transaction has gone through on your account. So those are some of the things that we do. A good, every delivery channel that we do, security is our paramount concern. At Centenary Bank, cybersecurity is a top priority. We spoke to some customers, and they took it very seriously. I master my PIN code in my brain. For my card, I keep my PIN in my me memory. When I master it, I'm the only person who can remember it and knows where it is. When I have challenges at the ATM, I ask, usually they ask if they are there. 
and uh, if the scar is not there, I probably will forego that transaction. On today's show, he has over two and a half decades of ICT experience and one of the founding members of the first digital academy in Uganda, Refactory Uganda. Welcome to the show, Michael Niyitegeka. I don't know, I, I, I'm worried. Are we really safe in Uganda online? Yes, we are, um, with a caveat. Uh-huh, what are you withholding? Caveat in the sense that uh, whereas the tech companies will do close to 90% of the work, there's a 10% that you need to take care of for you to be safe online. As long as you download an app, you are, in a way, opening your door to anybody who wants to, who, who could potentially hit you. So the essence is that you need to take time and understand how the apps you are using are accessing what they need to access off your device. You're saying hit you. What do you mean by people hitting me? So, so you have two, two types of, of, of potential hits. You have your corporate hit where they go through a third party entity like hit WhatsApp and therefore you are also hit. Correct. Then there is also the individual hit. Yes. The guys who fish you, um, send you phishing mails on, on, on your mail. Oh, the, these guys who send me emails, oh, you've won $10 million uh -huh. and, and what? And then they start asking you a few questions and you're letting your guard. Yes. And, and of recent, we've seen that happening quite a lot of mobile money. Yes. Where guys send you, hey, do you know uh, I've sent you money, yes. XYZ. Correct. Please, what do you see on your screen, XYZ? Then you, 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 you're processing. And the next thing is they're telling you, I think we're going to do an overhaul of the system, so please, to secure your money, just reset your password and correct, all that. Correct, correct. Within a short while, you're hit. So there's that, that is the individual level. Yes. So your, your service provider will have done their work, but because these guys have found a glitch in a system, yes, so, yes. so, so they lead you on. Yes. And within a short while, money goes off. So, so you can't say, the service provider has been hit. Yes. No, you've been hit at an individual level. Correct. But, but Michael, I want to be safe. I, I am part of 15 million Ugandans who have a mobile device and have access to the web. And online is my life. What can I do to make sure that I can sleep at night? So for you to sleep at night, look at your terms and conditions. Okay. Look at the security. So every app that you download, when you go to your Gmail, look at the security setting. Gmail will advise you to do, for example, what you call two-step authentication. Correct. Um, Gmail will alert you if your email is being accessed from a territory that you have not been to in yes. a long time because it is tracking. Mm -hmm. Also a security glitch. But yes, in Google tracks you. But they have visibility yes. of you're typically in Uganda, so when I access my email from... Outside of the country. Outside the country, and that becomes smarter. If the device changes... Yes, they will alert you. If your location changes, yes. they will alert you. Yes. And I will say, is it you? Correct. So activate some of these notifications. Mm -hmm. Because good. it is for your own good. Benefit. It's for your own benefit. The next bit is, how do you authenticate or enable access to your 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 accounts yes no and matter which platform it is no matter which platform whether it is a mobile mobile device, a computer yes tablet yes. yes yes recently i was trying to work do something at uria and yes. so they wanted me to access one of their terminals to change to access my t number yes that device was not recognized by my gmail correct and they asked me to to verify correct on my device that is recognized and it was a phone i had left at home yeah so you see the glitch which was good for me yes because it is multi-step security yeah, multi-step security now it sounds like a little bit of overkill, work yes. overkill mm. but in this sense it serves you i don't know how many times i've received emails from google telling me Somebody is trying to access your account from a territory that you hardly go to. Correct. And the, the first thing is, can you change your password? And you know, the truth be told, we are sometimes a little bit too lazy. Yes. 
when you have so much to read, you know somebody said that if ever you want to hide money from, from, from most people, hide it in, in books because we don't like reading. Yeah. So if I have this, I'll go to the bottom and, and take You're saying that's not safe. I should read through it. Well, your, your privacy settings will, will be general statements or general settings. Yes. But take time and go to the application and look at the privacy settings. Okay. But also find out what is this application accessing on my device. Ah, so is there a question from a standpoint of what I keep on my device? Because a lot of devices exactly. will say, are you giving me access to all of your documents, pictures, contacts, contacts and the rest? Yes. So somebody could also reach into my phone and access other things. So it depends on the security of the other application. So Correct. if the security has glitches, yes. they could hit you. So from a standpoint of me as an individual, should I be safe by not keeping very sensitive documents on my phone? You should be safe. But the, the key thing is, what do you, what permissions do you grant? Truth be told, all these entities are investing significant resources in the cyberspace. Yes. Securing use in the cyberspace. But let's also be honest, your thief 10 years ago has tremendously improved their tricks today. Mm. So the cyber thief is also not sleeping. All right. He's, he's consistently trying to be in tune because these guys are always trying to be ahead of the game. They are evolving. They're evolving and evolving very fast. If, if, if you're walking into your techno shop, um, have a conversation with the, the service provider there the attendant, the customer care provider, and ask them questions around security Correct. and say, is there anything that has changed? And I think it is important that most of these service providers or um, the MTNs of this world centenary yes. are constantly educating us and sending us up-to-date information. If Correct. you have an application, they will tell you there's an upgrade. Yes. And every time there's an upgrade, you know there's something they have improved on your service. Correct. So upgrade, because there's value in your upgrading. Yes. Now, many of us look at the MBs and you're like, ah, maybe I'll wait for it. But I would, I would advise you to upgrade, because right. every upgrade... You're making your security system more robust. More robust. Yes. Wonderful. All right, well, there you've heard it. Straight from the digital horse's mouth, data, private information, things that mean a lot to you. Now, all these can or may be hacked, but am I safe? What are the legal implications? Well, we went looking for insights and we spoke to our legal consults at Ballon Advocates from their offices at Kingdom Kampala. And they had very deep insights. Personal information in the layman's language is private information. It is provided for under Article, I think, 27, a right to privacy, and it calls for its protection. Uh, there is a law uh, called the Computer Misuse Act. It provides that no one can tap your personal information without your express permission. The exception is to your personal privacy. Like state agencies, there is a law that provides for them to either tap your emails or even your bank account details. Uh, there is a, a law is called the RICA, the Regulation of Interception of Communications Act. It gives state agencies leverage or powers if they feel they're investigating you by either by way of either a court order or without a court order to search your bank account to search your emails to intercept all your communications as long as they have a suspicion that whatever you are doing could be criminal those are the exceptions under which government or state agencies can intercept your personal your right to privacy 
live from our studios here at Kingdom Kampala. It's the second year quiz competition. Two contestants battling it out for 300,000 shillings. Marvin, a surveyor in the making, and Bernard, a businessman, but can he handle? It's time for the action. We've got 10 questions flashing on the screen. Question one. Uh-huh. Question is yours, Ben. D, all the above. All of the above is correct. Next question. Uh-huh. Mark. That's a fingerprint sensor. Next. Mm-hmm. Ben. Dead ass. All the above. All the above is correct. I'll get two points here. Next. What is that, Mark? What is that, Mark? I've seen it, but I don't have the answer. <laughs> Next question. Mm hmm Mark. A and B or none of the above? A and B. Next question. Uh-huh. What is that? That's a um, MiFi. That is not a MiFi. What is that? That is an MTN router. It's a router. You are correct. I'm giving you three points, man. Next question. Mom, you got three points. You want to add to it? What is that? Pass. Pass. It's called a roller shutter, but let us proceed. Next question. C. Your national ID. Oh! So what we're going to do is we're going to do a quick thing. Some people must be saying, oh, this side is lucky, this side is lucky. We're going to swap sides because we have got only two questions remaining. We now have to my left. Got Ben with three points, got Marv with three points, and each of them is looking at walking away with 300,000 big ones. Lico Tender, proudly brought to us by Centenary Bank. So, question is can you handle? Next question. Mm -hmm. Ben. B. Overt. It is actually covert cameras because we need things which people can see and usually put signage. One question remaining. B. B. Android 10.5. Okay. Do you think he is right? No. You don't think he's right. What answer do you think it is? Android 10A. Android 10A. Great pleasure, I'd like to say. Today's winner is none other than Marvin! <laughs> That's what they call a show. What? Bam, boom, bam! He walked away with 300,000 big ones. Courtesy of Centenary Bank. And next week, it could be you. So all you gotta do is check out our social media feeds and come on, engage and tell us you wanna be on the show. You could walk away with a lot of money. A special thank you to Centenary Bank. A big thank you to the MD for telling us all those security tips. A special thank you to MTN Uganda. A big up to Ballon Advocates. And a special thank you to Kingdom Kampala. And a special thank you to Techno. Well, my name is Dr. Mitch, and I'm going to keep reminding you, just in case you forget, security is for everyone. A big congratulations to Sekanyolia for being here 20 years. Congratulations, Sekanyolia. Well, Sekanyola have been very strong partners of the bank. We've moved, we've journeyed with them over time. Uh, they've provided CCTV cameras for us. They've provided other technological uh, security systems uh, and, and uh, probably there are things that have ensured that uh, we continue to be secure and we continue to sell that trust to our customers. We can only wish them well, congratulate them, and uh, we, we believe that uh, the sky will be the limit for them. And of course, we look forward to continuing growing with them.